What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for some preseason games for the Indigo League Legends Season 3. Uh, I have a relatively brief team analysis up for Season 3. Feel free to check that out. I'm looking forward to using this team this season. I'm using some things that I haven't used before and some things that are my bread and butter. Now, my uh, well, the first preseason match that I'm going to have is up against uh, Master Roshi. Uh, I will find his information and leave it in the description. But he has drafted such behemoths as uh, Clefable, Sableye, Mammal Swine, uh, Rotom Heat, Latias, Blastoise, Landorus, Therian Form, Golbat, Heracross, Vileplume, Drapion, Exbile, Glaceon, Rampardos, and Ditto. So um, for this battle, I'm expecting him for the preseason here. This is a great chance to just test some things out. Not really too serious for, for as far as things go, but we can bring um, a combination of UU and OU to have four Pokemon, and the remaining two have to be RU and below. So I'm expecting to see from him Clefable, Sableye for a fantastic core, Mamoswine to counter my Venusaur, and to a lesser extent to uh, handle my uh, Togekiss, Rotom Heat to counter my Charizard, Drapion in order to soak up any possible toxic spikes that I might be trying to put down and also to do some decent damage with knockoff and counter things like my Rotom and Gothitelle and ditto because I have so many things I can set up. Now in response to that team I'm actually going to bring Charizard Y uh, most notably with Tailwind here so some of these other Pokemon can outspeed his Pokemon. Uh, bulky Fortress with Spikes and Stealth Rock with a very nice uh, very slow um, rather Volt Switch just so I can get a little bit of, I don't know, some type of priority there. We're going to go with a Banded Crawdon. It hits uh, with Dark and Water. I hit every single member of his team at least neutrally. Uh, and I really need the priority Water type here just so that I can hit Mammoth Swine on Landorus, which I'm pretty sure he'll be bringing at least one of them. Uh, and then Dragalge is going to be my last UU slash OU Pokemon with Draco Plate. I'm running Haze just because he might also be setting up, but if he doesn't, then I can get rid of my own Draco Meteor drops. And Sludge Wave is a good way. I'm pr I'm very sure and he's going to have Clefable, so that'll be a good way to handle that. Imbor will really benefit, um, as will... I only put 132 speed onto Dragalge because that's what I need to outspeed um, uninvested Clefable. Similarly to Crawdon, I just wanted to make sure I could outspeed Clefable. I didn't want to get hit. Clefable can get psychic type coverage to hit Dragalge, and of course, Moonblast will blow away Crawdon. Uh, so I just wanted to be fast enough to hit those speed tiers before the tailwind. Um, I went max speed, reckless, adamant, and bore to hopefully take advantage of the tailwind, and then I can do a lot of damage with Flare Blitz and uh, Sucker Punch to the majority of his team. Uh, he doesn't have any steel types, so that really makes. Um, some of these Pokemon, like Dragalge, their job a little bit easier. Uh, and then finally in the last slot, Aurorus, a Pokemon that I don't have that much experience with. We're just going to test it out. Uh, Ice with Refrigerate for Hyper Voice. And Ancient Power and Freeze Dry hit the majority of his team for a super effective or at least neutral. With Earth Power there, just in case he brings a bulky uh, defensive Drapion of some sort. And I can hit it a little bit harder with Earth Power. Um, which even then, Refrigerate boosted Hyper Voice might still be stronger so it's kind of um not, i don't know we're gonna test it out i i ran a couple of calcs but not really anything too super serious so uh we're going to go up against him first here okay the challenge was canceled how do i oh okay i just clicked again i guess ou versus master all right cool and bing Right after this, I'll be having my preseason fight against um, DBR, or Director DBR. He has a pretty powerful team as well, but um, depending on the length of these battles, I may or may not be setting it up for, um, I don't know, all-in-one video type deal. So he does, he brought, he did not bring Clefable, which is, okay, he's just going to try a few things too. Okay, so same here. Uh... Rampardos and okay, so I this is probably scarfed. Sableye definitely looks like his mega here. I doubt he'd bring a mega Latias. Um, Spikes won't be quite as useful in this matchup just because of who he brought. But with a tailwind up, my Embor completely smashes this team. 
So if he he's probably either gonna start with one of these three in the front right here. This is this might be a rock polish or a scarf set. Most of the time, Explod is choice specs. So he's probably expecting me to lead with my Charizard and will in turn lead with Landorus. So a good anti lead to that would just be go straight for Crawdon. That way, if he leads with Sableye, I can well then again. Hmm. If he leads with Landorus. If he leads with Landorus, then I can just switch out into my Fortress. If he leads with um, Rotom, then I can just... Hmm. So, I think he's going to lead with Landorus, honestly. So, I should just go ahead and lead with Fortress and then Volt Switch. Uh, if he doesn't lead with Landorus, actually, I can just put up my Stealth Rocks. So, if he leads with Sableye, then I can Volt Switch out of there. So, we're going to go with that. He does lead with Sableye, great. So I could have led with Charizard there for some serious uh, offensive momentum, but we're just gonna click Volt Switch here, expecting him to Mega Evolve up. Uh, he does just go straight for will o -Wisp. I could have Hard Switch out, but I didn't want to. Um, I wanted to make sure that he stayed in there. Uh, if he went on to Landorus, it'd be honestly better to stay in with Fortress here. So since he went for will o -Wisp right there, now he lost that Prankster ability, which is very, very nice. And I get a free switch out into Charizard, really. Uh, he can go out into Rotom as I bring in Charizard. But even Rotom won't like taking a uh, Sun Boosted Stab Fire Blast. So Mega Ball. This is such a cool button. I like how easy they made it to click. Shoutouts to the Smogon team there. Or I guess Showdown team, rather. Uh, whoever programmed this button on the page. Thank you. It's so nice and easy to click. I'm tempted to go for Dragon Pulse here. That's because it hits everything that he has neutrally. I could also go for Solar Beam in order to get a, a stronger neutral hit off on um, Landorus. But I think here he's just going to switch out into either Latias. His main switch is really Rotom. He could bring in Rampardos, but that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So expecting Rotom, I'm just going to go ahead and go for Dragon Pulse. I could also go for Tailwind and then bring in Dragalge on the Rotom. Uh, or he might just stay in here. So if, then if he stays in, Fire Blast is my best option. We're just going to go for Fire Blast. Okay, he's going to go out into Latias. Okay, so Dragon Pulse definitely would have been amazing here. Um, that actually did a solid amount of damage. Pretty impressive. Latias, I'm not sure if it can one-hit KO me with anything. It can use Draco Meteor, but it will not one-hit KO me for sure. I'm just going to click Dragon Pulse, see what he does. Uh, Charizard Y actually has a really nice base special defense stat. It's, it's not close to its special attack stat, but... Still very nice overall. He goes for Psy Shock here. And Dragon Pulse, that is a very bulky Latias because Psy Shock should have done more than that. So since he went for Psy Shock, that means that I can switch into uh, I I can switch into Fortress. I think the switch into Crawdon is a little bit obvious. So Fortress is really my best switcher, and then I can go for another slow volt switch as he brings back in the Sableye. Um, he might have Hidden Power Fire. I don't expect him to have that, honestly. He just goes for Psy Shock again. Very ballsy. I could have just brought in um, uh, Crawdon. But I guess that wouldn't help me anyway because the Sun's right up, up right now. I also really wanted to test out having Crawdon and Sun if I could play around that. Um, here, it's I, I would love to click Stealth Rocks to predict him to do something. But we're just going to Volt Switch. See if he has Hidden Power Fire. If he has it, it'll probably kill me with the Sun up. Uh, but this, the preseason is also just a good way to kind of gauge how some of your opponents are playing. Um, he does have Hidden Power Fire, so that kind of sucks. Um, no Life Orb, no Leftovers. He's not stuck on Psy Shock. What is his, what item does he have? I'm a little bit confused about that. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what item he has there. But anyways, though, we're going to go out into, since those are the moves he has, I don't think he has anything to hit at Roris. That means he doesn't have Hidden Power Fighting. Um, he could just drop a Draco on me, but he doesn't really have anything that wants to take uh, Hyper Voice too much here. Alrighty, so we're just going to go straight for Hyper Voice. That hits everything that he has, except for Rotom, which won't enjoy taking in unless it's a bulky variant. That sucks that I was not able to get up any entry hazards, though. I, was, I didn't know if he would have Hidden Power Fire on Latios, but granted he knew I'm bringing Charizard Y, so that makes sense. Uh, Hidden Power Fire will not pick up the KO here. I don't know what item he has. Um, no, no recoil on anything. He might have Expert Belt. Expert Belt Latias. I have seen that before. I'm not 
He could also be something weird like a Lumberry or something to avoid status from like a Prankster Lipard, which I did not bring Lipard, of course, but that is a very real possibility. Lipard didn't seem too useful in this matchup between Rotom, uh, the Mammoth Swine with its own priority, then of course Landorus also cannot be paralyzed. So there are a few things there that maybe not want to bring it. Also Clefable made Lipard not as good of a choice. Okay, so this is going to hurt. Awesome, we just get to blow away Rampardos, proving that our fossil Pokemon is better for this matchup. Uh, I guess he decided Rampardos was the most expendable member. That also worked out, if he had gone into Rotom, the sun would have gone down after I hit him. And so that means he doesn't get a boosted overheat off into Aurorus's face. So, I rather like that outcome. Um, Rampardos going down isn't that big of a deal, though honestly, me losing Fortress was a lot worse. Um... What else is... So Latias has Hidden Power Fire, Psy Shock, a Dragon move, and then something for filler that can't really hit Aurora's hard enough. I'm not really sure what that would be. Uh, so he does go out into Rotom Heat. This is where we get to test out Ancient Power. Um, I also get to see if he's Scarfed, which will be nice. Well, I won't really get to see if he's... I get to see if he's bulky. If he's not running any speed, I'll outspeed him. If he's running any speed at all, he'll be faster. A burn doesn't really help him out here. You might expect me to switch. Okay, great. So, um, he's going to switch out probably into the Sableye, honestly. Anything else? Mm, he could also go out in the Landorus, but he... I, I might just go for an Ice move. That's a really risky move for him to go out in the Landorus. Uh, I did go for Ancient Power, though, so that'll hit the Landorus a little bit. He does go out in the Landorus, gets the Intimidate. Um, that did a good amount of damage, and I get all the boost from Ancient Power. Man, I hope I can do that during the actual season, because that'll be amazing. Um, I don't know if I actually outspeed him or not right now. Um, I can check that out really quick, actually. So, Landorus' is base speed. Hmm, let us see here. Let's assume he's an all-out attacker. Oops, wrong Landorus. We need the Therian form. Um, yeah, whatever. So we'll assume he's max speed here. So at low 100, he is 309. So 236 at 1.5 is going to allow me to outspeed him. So if that's the case, I'm faster. Hyper voice, boom. So we definitely needed that. Uh, that's Ancient Power and Silver Wind um, and Ominous Wind. All those moves where it's just like, and you have a 10% chance of boosting all your stats. Those are kind of weird moves to use because if you get that 10% boost, it can really, really change the game. But the chance of it happening is so low that it's nothing to rely upon at all. Uh, him losing Landorus right there is pretty big. I really just wanted to whittle it down to the point where I could finish it off with a Sucker Punch from Embor or an Aqua Jet from um, Crawdont. But since he brought back in the Sableye here, we have to go for a boosted Hyper Voice, which also cleans out Sableye. I didn't expect that to kill. You might be max uh, physical defense. Um, so yeah, this, it's... That's just really lucky, getting that boost, which I will take. I don't know if you guys watched my run in the Pokemon Premier League. A little bit si uh, tired of all the unnecessary hacks there. So at plus one, I wonder if I'm faster now. If he's Scarf, he's definitely still faster. If he's not, he's going to eat this Earth Power. Um, I don't really need Aurorus anymore. Granted, I really like having Aurorus here, but now it's done its job. Ancient Power is enough to... Was that a crit? Yeah, it, I just I just got lucky. Not boozy, lucky boost. Yeah, hyper voice here just kind of obliterates his whole. And then I get a crit. There's the crit. Um. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll check out freeze right here to see if it's okay. That's strong enough too. All right, and then and then just erupts all in the wound. We live on 2% HP. Um, alrighty then, so that happened. This is only a 14 minute video. Let me see if I can find um, DRB and we'll be right back. Okay, so while I wait to find that match against uh, DRB, let's go over the team that I'm using against him. Uh, DRB had access to a lot of, uh, a lot of very versatile Pokemon. Um, his draft is, I'll just read it off really fast, I'm not expecting you guys to remember anything, it's just it's for my own mental acuity, really. Uh, Slowbro and Weavile in the first two rounds of pick, 
Raikou, Victini, Crobat, Tangrowth, Cobalion, Nidoking, Whimsicott, Jellicent, Ambipom, Hitmonlee, Latios, Feraligatr, and Dusclops. Uh, a little bit of an unorthodox draft because there it's really hard to predict which way he's going to go with any of the teams that he might have. I really don't like bringing Sun here, so I did not bring Charizard. Um, why, rather, as my um, may, or wait, what? That's weird. What was I thinking when I made this? I'm not sure what I was thinking. I have two Megas on the same team. That's weird. Let me fix that. Hold on. Just... Alrighty, so I fixed the team. I don't know what was going on there. I'm going to assume I was trying to build this team after all that Black Friday sales work I did. And I wasn't right in my mind. So anyways, though, I don't want to bring Sun to this matchup. His Tangrowth can take advantage of it. His Victini can take advantage of it. Um, he has so many different ways to hit uh, Charizard between various projectiles that are increased in speed, like Weavile's Ice Shard, Crobat's faster, um, Whimsicott can paralyze it. it. It's just gonna, he has Fake Out on Ambipom and possibly on Hitmonlee. For Alligator gets Aqua Jet. Didn't really want to bring it. I didn't seem like a, like a good matchup. Uh, so you won't see Venusaur at all during the preseason, apparently. But what you will see is a Life Orb, Swords Dance, Crawdont. If I get an opportunity to set this up, this crushes his entire team. Because uh, there's nothing on his team that can take a plus two adaptability boosted hit. Um, the only one that really can is Latios, and he doesn't really like taking that. I think I'm, I don't know, if I can get a little bit of prior damage on it, that's a sweep, period. Now speaking of prior damage, I do have spikes on Fortress, he only has out of his whole team, um, I think the Tangrowth, the Latios, the Tangrowth and the Latios are the only things that aren't ground, uh, not the Tangrowth, the Crobat and the Latios are the only things that aren't grounded. So Spikes is really good here. I do want the slow Volt Switch once again, just because that, that worked out well in the first battle of the preseason, why not try it out again? A uh, Dragalgy with the Draco plate, this time I have Shadow Ball over Haze, and I have Focus Blast here just to cover a few of his team members, such as... Um, I can hit the uh, Jellicent a little bit harder because adaptability boosted Sludge Wave won't hurt Jellicent too much and I don't want to lower my special attack against a Jellicent. Um, and Focus Blast is just to kind of get a little bit of extra coverage if he's trying to switch around. Um, most notably on Cobalion who resists Focus, uh, who resists Sludge Wave and Draco Meteor. So I want to be able to hit him too. Um, we're going with the same Embor. Just max B, max attack, and the uh, high end of the adamant nature there. Same moves, just because they work out pretty well against his team too. Uh, Embor is going to be more of a wall breaker in this setup here. If he brings max defense Slowbro, it gives me a way to hit him too, uh, without locking into a choice band. And then I have Lipard in that last slot there. Again, Lipard's not a Pokemon that I have a lot of experience with, so I just want to give it a shot. Uh, U-turn for a fast... Um, Momentum Grabber, Thunder Wave, because he, I think he only has, I mean, he could have Limber on Hitmonlee to avoid the Paralysis there, but his only ground type is Nidoking, and his only electric type is Raikou, and nothing else really wants to get paralyzed. So, um, Knock Off in Pursuit, just because I'm really afraid of Victini, and he has a lot of Pokemon that can lose their items and be hurt pretty, pretty badly by that, so. We're going to go with that setup. See how it goes. Let me go try to find DBR. Alrighty, so we are back with DRB. And he has chosen to go with a pretty offensive team here. Um, Weavile was relatively expected, as was Victini and Crobat and Latios. Didn't know if he'd go with Ryko and, um, and uh, Cobalion. Uh, so this works out well. I actually could have brought Sun to this and been fine. It looks like either Victini or Raikou a Scarf. This might be the lead, um, anti-lead type Crobatic. Also could be Banded. Uh, and this probably is prob more of a, a standard Latios here. Unfortunately, he definitely has the... the he's probably going to lead with either Victini, just because he can just click V-Create against my team, or Crobat. Um, I'm going to lead with Lipar, because then at least I, that way I can force him into Raikou if he has that. He doesn't have any way to clear status on his team. So Lipar is not a bad lead. And we're going to go with that, because then I can just click Thunder Wave against the Victini as well. 
So let's see how that works. He starts off with his Raikou. That is no, that is not bueno. Okay, so I could just knock it off. I could also just U-turn here to see if he's scarfed or something like that too. Um, hmm. At least I think I'm faster. Raikou has 115 base speed. I'm not familiar with Light Part. I think it's 120 something. I think it's 120 something. Let me let me see here really fast. Ha! Huh? While we're talking about speed, I'm gonna check really fast. It's 106. Okay, so it is slower. Okay, that's good to know. I actually haven't used Light Part very much before, and generally I see it using its prankster abilities. So. Right here, the safest switch is just into Dragalge. Uh, he might see that coming in Volt Switch, though. That might be annoying. Um, I should be able to take a Volt Switch if he decides to go for that. Um, hmm. I don't think he has Mega Latios. We're just going to go for Knockoff. Okay, I get a crit right at the beginning. He had an Expert Bell. He goes for his own Thunder Wave. Didn't see that coming. I admit that I didn't see that coming. I also didn't expect to be faster than him. Uh, that must mean that he's not max speed. So I'm happy that I didn't go out into Dragalge because I don't want Dragalge paralyzed for this battle. I am going to go out into um, Fortress isn't a bad switch here. I can soak up any move that he wants to go for. Although I do like saving the Sturdy just in case I need it later on. And the only way you can get rid of my entry hazards is to defog. So one of those two probably has defog. Um, so I'm going to try to go for a U-turn here. Oh, he just has Aura Sphere, right, because of the event. So Fortress would have been a much better switch there. But now I just get to go into Crawdon and click uh, Aqua Jet, which will be nice. I can also go into... Um, that's weird that he wasn't faster than Lipard. Uh, and he, he lived the crit knockoff, so maybe he's a weird bulky set. No, 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 no. To have Aura Spear, you have to have a Rash Nature, so he would not be faster with a Rash Nature, I believe, because that was an event Pokemon. So if that is the case, if Aura Spear is his best move to hit me, Agron isn't a bad switch, because then I can just click Heavy Slam and really hurt most of his teammates. I can also just go for Stealth Rocks. Um, yeah, I like that move. So we're going to go into Agron. We're going to Mega Evolve here. And I could set up my Stealth Rocks, um, but he can just defog those away, so... I'm expecting him to just go straight for Aura Sphere. I don't know how much that'll do, though. Uh, I don't... He's clearly not choiced anyway. He doesn't have a Life Orb or anything, either. So let's just set up Stealth Rocks. We'll see what he does. I'm expecting him to Volt Switch out. Uh, or if he just goes for Aura Sphere, I think it'll do about a quarter of my HP. Granted, I may be severely overestimating Filter, but it's a non-stab uh, type attack. And, of course, I'm only one times weak to it when I Mega Evolve. So, okay. Wow. That was highly unexpected. I greatly overestimated um, Aggron's bulk there. I don't know what happened there. Oh, I know what happened here. Okay, so all my Pokemon are at level 50. Um... Yeah, so hold on, let me let me get that fit. Okay, so um, now that all my Pokemon are at the right freaking level, we can try this again. Uh, just going with the Lipard lead. And... Yeah. I don't think it's going to be this e as easy to be the same. Um... I can't recreate that hit, so, uh, yeah. But we can, we'll try. We'll try. It's really hard to type with one hand. I'm holding the mic with the other hand. Alright. Anyways, there we go. Alright. Don't, don't try to do too many things at one time, Brain. So just knock off again. Oh, wow, that still does fantastic damage. Uh... So, yeah, if I had gotten the crit with full, uh, with all my levels, then he definitely would have died. So I'm just going to go ahead and sacrifice my life heart here. He goes down. Get to go out into Aggron. This time, we will not get Destralish. Good gravy. We're just going to Mega Evolve. This time, I have to click Heavy Slam. Um, Earthquake, he just has, 
he has two immunities to Earthquake, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to click Earthquake. Um, no, wait, no, he has to go for Aura Sphere, so I just go for Stealth Rock here. That's what I was expecting last time. Good freaking gravy. Okay, so that happens. And now if he's going to keep on going for Aura Sphere, I feel like I get a free switch out into Dragalge there. Um, he could have Hidden Power Icy at Dragalge. Don't know how useful that is for him, though. Um, it is nice to not see Jellicent. Uh, so, I'm tempted to just go for Heavy Slam. But we're just going to go out into Dragalge here, because I'm not sure what he's going to do. I think he's going to keep on going for Aura Sphere. The preseason is also interesting for these people that I haven't played against, like uh, Master Roshi or uh, Director DRB. You just get you get a little bit of a bead on their playstyle if they tend to make ridiculous plays or really risky plays um, early on and that type of thing. So, uh, I didn't know Lipar could hit that hard. Its base attack is only 88, I believe. I think its attack and special attack are only 88. So, I'm, I'm quite pleased that it did that much damage to a, a rash-natured Raikou. That, that's pretty good, I'm going to say. He goes for Volt Switch. Definitely, definitely, definitely should have gone for Heavy Slam. That would have been the play of awesomeness if I stayed in and went for Heavy Slam. Because he most certainly would have expected Earthquake. Now he's probably going to go out into Victini. Um, maybe Latios. He can Defog. Which, that's something I can do. I could just stay in expecting him to Defog. And smack him with the move. Very risky to do that though. Uh, Latios and Victini have super effective moves to hit Dragalge with. He could even go out into Weavile and hit me with the super effective move. Um, hmm. But whatever he switches in, most of the team that he brought is weak to Stealth Rocks. Uh, so if I could get Spikes up here, that's going to make this game a lot easier. I'll either force him into Defogging, or uh, as... Okay, so yeah, he has definitely chosen to Defog here, which I am completely okay with. I'm just going to hit him with the Draco Meteor. He's probably going to get the Defog off, but that's okay. Um, hopefully I hit the Draco. Alright, and we eliminate Crobat immediately. Awesome. I will happily take that trade. Uh, now he's most likely to go out into either Victini or Cobalion. He might try to set up. Um, it's a little hard for him to set up with Cobalion while I have Fortress. Unless it's one of those Calm Mind variants with Hidden Power Fire. Not, not a fun time there. I really want to try out Counter Fortress at some point during this league. Uh, just to be able to throw my opponent's attack back at him. It really reminds me when I was using Counter Gastrodon and I was able to knock out Omega Metagross with it. Now that was fun. So Fortress has the ability to kind of throw around some random moves like that. Fortress also gets Light Screen um, and Reflect, weirdly enough. And I used to use a Dual Screen Fortress alongside a Chlorophyll Venusaur back in 5th Gen. So that was a really fun time. Now he could go for a U-turn here just because he I really need to switch. Um, he could also just go for a V-create. Uh, if he, I do need to find out if he's locked into something too. I need to keep Agron relatively healthy so that he can take another hit. Um, unfortunately, Dragalge's not outspeeding anything on his team. I already got a kill with it, which is really nice. Um, I'm tempted to just go for Draco Meteor again, expecting him to go for U-turn. So I think that's actually... I could also go for Shadow Ball, but if he brings in Victini on the U-turn, which I don't think he'd do, actually. Shadow Ball hits everything that he has neutrally. I won't get another drop, and it's guaranteed to at least hit something. Uh, I think he's going to U-turn. He might just go for the second type Zen Headbutt, though. Zen Headbutt is risky because I could bring in Crawdont, but it wouldn't make sense to try to bring in Crawdont here. That's, that's unnecessary because Crawdont right now is a win condition if I can whittle down some of these Pokemon that he has. Uh, so let's go ahead and go for Sludge Wave is a nice middle of the ground option. Eh, let's just go for Focus Blast. He does go for U-Turn, which is nice. I'm assuming he's going to go into uh, Cobalion. He might predict Shadow Ball and go. He also might just sacrifice Raikou, which would be really nice because that that's the next speedy thing on his team after Weavile. So um, after even at minus two special attack, I can still hurt something, so he does decide to sacrifice Raikou. I miss my fucking Draco, of course. Ooh, did I just curse? Excuse me. Um, I don't curse very often, unless I'm recording and I just got off of work. Then when, um, then stuff happens, I tend to let a slip of the tongue happen. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, that would have been nice to get rid of Raikou. 
but now I'm forced to see what he's gonna do here. I think he's, I really need to keep Fortress healthy. So let's just go for another Draco. Um, he just goes for Thunderbolt. Okay, I'm happy I just stayed in there. And I get a critical hit to make up for the miss, so that works out okay. Uh, now he's definitely gonna go into Victini and um, yeah, he can just click uh, his Psychic tight. And I, I do like the, the synergy of Dragalge alongside Crawdont, because they can't just click that Psychic move every time. I could go out into Crawdont, and that would be bad news bears for most Pokemon. Now, Crawdont is not a free switching on Latios. He could have Energy Ball on Latios. Um, I'm very, very, very tempted to save Dragalge right here, because he's probably gonna go for the Psychic type move. He also might be a weird physical one, uh, Mega Latios with Dragon Dance, which would suck. Um, I'm just gonna go out into Aggron here because I don't think he can hit me very hard with anything and I can paralyze him. So that's my move. Let's see what he goes for. He is Mega Latios, he goes for Psychic. That is a crit, that did a lot of damage. Um, hopefully I can paralyze him. Hopefully, let's see what he goes for. What's his coverage move? Hidden Power Fighting would be unfortunate. He definitely needed that crit though. Without the crit, I wouldn't be in range for really anything here. Uh, if he does decide to switch, nothing that he has left wants to be paralyzed. Gobalion may have a Lumberry. Uh, but yeah, nothing that he has wants to be paralyzed, really. I like that nickname, Jet Set. If you haven't played Jet Set Radio, you might have missed your window um, playing that back when it first came out. It was a fun experience. He just goes for Draco. And that sucks because, yeah, he definitely needed that crit damage to finish me off there. But now that he's at minus two uh, special attack, now I can bring in Crawdont and just click. Um, Swords Dance, actually. I'm pretty sure I can. So we're gonna go with that. Since he has minus two. Yeah, we're gonna Swords Dance up right here. I'm not sure what he can do to me at minus two. I don't think he can do anything. Um, and then I get a really nice... Uh, I can one-hit KO the Weavile. I can one-hit KO Victini. And I can um, put Cobalion. If he goes out into Cobalion, I actually should go ahead and calc that. I'm not sure if I can one KO that or not. Um, let's see, I'm curious. I don't normally run too many calcs during um, a match or whatever, because I try to do them all ahead of time, but this is the preseason. So why not? Uh, we'll assume plus two attack, and I'm actually adamant. And plus two, Crab Hammer knocks out. Aqua Jet does not even come close to knocking out. Uh, he'll definitely outspeed. So let's see what he does. If he goes out into Cobalion, then I will just switch right out into Fortress. I'm expecting him to either just attack me to prevent me from um, doing anything, because he might not think that I'm trying to set up like a banded Crawdon would be really nice in this matchup too. Um, I don't want to go straight for knockoff because it could bring in Cobalion on knockoff and then get that nice justified boost from getting hit by a dark type move. So, uh, Swords Dance is really my best play because then if he does, if he brings in Cobalion, I get a free switch out into Embor or into Fortress. Uh, of course, with Fortress out, I can set up some spikes, which will make things harder for Weavile, Cobalion, and um, Victini. Or I could also just go out into Embor, which. Um, I don't outspeed Cobalion, but I can take any hit from Cobalion after something goes down and hit it back. Uh, Embor is also nice assurance in the back because he resists both of uh, Weavile's stab type moves, leaving Weavile with what? Low kick to hit Embor with, which actually has a decent base power because Embor is so heavy. And I can use Sucker Punch against uh, Victini and Latios. So I'm curious to see what he goes into here. I'm expecting him to go into Cobalion. But Swords Dance was still the best play because it puts so much pressure on his team if he chooses not to go into Cobalion. And if he stays in, then I'm doing pretty well, I think. So, it will be interesting. Uh, who else did I have in my draft that I wanted to talk about? Um, in my draft, I actually picked up quite a few. I, I went with the Venusaur Togekiss Corrigan. I talked about that some in the uh, initial video. One Pokemon that I didn't talk about too much was Rhyperior. I actually used to use him a lot back in 5th gen, and he has some really nice wall breaking power. I actually considered bringing him to this matchup that I'm in now with DRB. But uh, 
with the sun to get to alleviate that water weed in the sun, I really like Rhyperior. Plus, he can have uh, another Pokemon for me to set up Stealth Rocks with. And he gets some nice coverage against Grass types with Mega Horn. Uh, and he can use Smackdown. I might be using Smackdown in some matches just so I can force something to be vulnerable to my Earthquake if I can. Uh, Rhyperior, of course, can also run a pretty decent Rock Polish set with its base speed isn't um, completely useless for running Rock Polish once it gets doubled, similar to um, Aurora's with Rock Polish too. They can both activate with Rock Polish and, and sweep a little bit if you, with a little bit of paralysis support from Light Part, of course. Uh, and of I also used Rotom previously in the LBA, so you guys are no strangers to me using Rotom. Charizard Y is just something that I battle against a fair bit, but I haven't used it too much myself. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something that I wanted to try out. I did try out Charizard X for a little while in the um, Alpha Battle League. But that league didn't continue the whole time, but I did enjoy it while I used it. So... Yeah, it, it's fun. We're just going to wait on him to, to choose his move. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Apparently his computer died. Maybe I just hung out in the room, otherwise we would have lost the game. Uh, so we did go out into Cobalion. Happy I didn't go for knockoff there. Um, going for Crab Hammer would have been a nice uh, offensive pressuring move. I'm definitely not faster, but I'm expecting him to just go for close combat. I could go into... Um, Dragalge here, but I that'd be sacrificing Dragalge. Uh, he also might taunt or set up his own stealth rocks, which I don't think he'll do because now I'm a super. Um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm pretty offensive, offensively threatening right now, so I don't think I think he'll just go for uh, close combat. Honestly, uh, that means I get to go out in a fortress though and put up some spikes, which will be really really nice. Uh, so we're gonna go with that. So he goes for Thunder Wave. That's pretty interesting. That could have been really uh, risky for him. So we get to get some spikes up right here. Really important again that I keep Fortress somewhat healthy here. He does go for Volt Switch. I really, really, really hope I don't get paralyzed here. He's probably going to go out into Victini. So getting some spikes up right now is crucial to pressuring Cobalion because then he's in range. I do get my layer of spikes up, which is fantastic. Um, so now uh, it'll be a roll on Cobalion if I can get another Swords Dance up, if I can KO him with an Aqua Jet, I believe. Uh, he's probably just going to go for V-Create here. I'm okay with Fortress going down uh, as long as I keep... Because I can just go out into my Crawdon and start clicking Aqua Jet. Um, alternatively, I could go into Dragalge here because Dragalge is not very helpful against what he has left. And I can still switch in Fortress on Cobalion. So we're going to go for that. I mean, just expecting V-Create. So he does go for it. He gets that delicious speed and defense drop. I, I love that effect of V-Create there. It really balances out that ability nicely. And so that means I get to go out into either Embor or I could go out into Crawdont um, and click Swords Dance once again. Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to go out into Crawdont and click Swords Dance again. I could also just go straight for Aqua Jet expecting him to stay in. But uh, if he, if I go Aqua Jet, he goes out into Latios, and I'm forced to switch into Fortress. So, although that's not ter a terrible position to be into. So we're going to go out into Crawdon here. I could also go for Knockoff here. I think he's still faster than me. Um, Victini at level 100, max speed. Um, is going to hit, I think, level 100 speed hits 306 speed. I'm pretty sure. So, we'll assume that he's jolly, especially because he has, well, Tim, it's fine. 328, that's what I'm thinking of, base 90s at 30, 308. So, 328. Um, 328. Let's see here. So, you... Let's see, so 328 minus 164. Oh wait, no, he only lost one stage of speed. Whoops. Okay, so 328 times. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, so Crawdont actually might outspeed him at minus one, but I still don't necessarily want to risk that because Crawdont is my win condition. So we click Aqua Jet um, out into. Okay, good, good, because now, now we're whittling down that Cobalion, and I can just go out into Fortress again. He's probably just going to Volt Switch, but that's okay, honestly. Uh, I could also go out into Embor here, but Fortress is my best play. Definitely gonna Volt Switch. That's fine by me. He's probably gonna go out into Victini again. Also fine by me. Forces him to go for uh, Flare, uh, excuse me, V Create. Um, I'm very happy that this game continued there because that means we would have had to restart twice because of my Pokemon being the wrong level and all other stuff. So he does go out into Victini, takes that nice little damage there in the beginning. If he tries to do anything besides V Create, I'm gonna make him pay for it. He goes for Bolt Strike. Um, not sure why. I just get up extra spike layers this way. I do get to see if he's Scarfed, though. If he's Scarfed, he's going to switch out right now. And which, in that case, I'm going to Volt Switch. So he is Scarfed. I get off Volt Switch, which is nice. So Scarf Victini. Very, very interesting. Um, so since he's Scarfed, I can go into Embor here to guarantee that he's going to at least lock, use a Psychic move. Or, um, I, I guess he could call mine or something weird. I don't know that Mega Latios would necessarily utilize that. Draco Meteor, Psychic, maybe Calm Mind Substitute? Um, Calm Mind Recover? I'm not sure what he would have in that slot. So I could also go out into Crawdont, but that doesn't really help at all. So we're gonna go into Embor. And let I could just go straight for Sucker Punch, uh, but I, I'm, t I'm very worried that he has some type of setup move. He knows that I have Sucker Punch, so. Flare Blitz might be a way to just get some damage on him. Let's just try the Sucker Punch. Okay, he does try to use something. He just goes straight for Psychic. Okay, so I'm really happy that I didn't overpredict there, because there wouldn't have been a lot of point in doing so. I don't know how much my um, Aqua Jet does to him, so I'm kind of forced to go back out into Fortress here. And we'll try to Gyro Ball, just because that hits he has some faster Pokemon, plus I'm paralyzed, so it's going to do a decent amount, unless he has Hidden Power Fire. Uh, if he goes out into Cobalion, then I can get up some more spikes, so hooray. Because uh, I don't think Cobalion can one-hit KO me. And I just basically, if he leaves in Latios here, then that's really, really good. Because either I'll knock it out with Gyro Ball, or um, I'll get... Okay, so I do a little bit more damage to Cobalion there. Um... Again, just trying to ensure that he cannot live the Aqua Jet. That's what I'm trying uh, to force here. He just goes for Flash Cannon. I get up my last layer of spikes, which is really, really nice. And we're just going to go for a Gyro Ball a few more times to offset. Uh, I haven't gotten paralyzed once, which is weird. Um, I'm doing a little bit more than his leftovers with Gyro Ball. So we're just going to keep on going for that. He gets the critical hit there. I still haven't gotten paralyzed. Uh, now he's at 29%, so now he's definitely in range for that move. We're gonna go for another gyro. We're just gonna keep on gyro balling. I really don't have a good reason to not do so. Um, if I get paralyzed, that kind of sucks there, but it won't, it also doesn't matter. There's the para, it took long enough. Uh, so now he's definitely in range of an aqua jet, which is nice. Uh, I would have preferred to get one more gyro ball off there to ensure it, but that's okay. So out in the crawdont here, and now I just click Aqua Jet, because that's my win condition right now. So Aqua Jet all the way away. He lives on 3%, are you joking? Oh man, that is really unfortunate. I definitely, yeah, that para that he got right there. And then I get paralyzed again. He does not have a fighting type coverage move, that's interesting. Um, so he's definitely a fully uh, defensive Cobalion to live that move. Now, um, I, I'm pretty sure Latios, Mega Latios, especially with the defensive buff that he gets, is able to take those hits. I'm just going to keep going for Aqua Jet. Um, so I finish off the Victini. If he brings in Weavile, that goes down too. Uh, but of course, I could, get, I could get paralyzed at any point here as well. Um, I definitely thought he would have a fighting type coverage move. So he, he might have had uh, Stealth Rocks on Cobalion and just never put him up. Uh, so, once again, Aqua Jet, do I get paralyzed? That is the question. I do not. It is not KO Weavile, which is also surprising. He finishes me off with a uh, life, uh, life Orb knockoff there. So, that was actually a pretty good battle. Um, that paralysis there in the end with Fortress definitely did me in. 
because otherwise I would have been able to take out the Gobelian and I wouldn't have gotten paralyzed. Uh, I could have also, if, I don't know, I just was expecting him to have a fighting type move, so. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, that that's the first week of the preseason there. I got a little bit of a workout with some of these Pokemon that I haven't used before. I think I played decently well. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, this video is going on a good bit, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. I look forward to week two of the preseason, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.